The bipartisan Problem Solvers Caucus released a $1.5 trillion proposal yesterday. While it's been rejected by leading Democrats, the White House has shown some interest in it. I'm joined now by the bipartisan chairs of the Congressional Problem Solvers Caucus. It's Democrats Josh Gutheimer and Republican Tom Reed. Gentlemen, in a non-COVID world, you would be doing this interview literally side by side, but we are putting you figuratively uh, side by side. Um, uh, Congressman Gutheimer, let me start with you because uh, obviously here the Democrats, it's your party in charge of the House. So... Uh, the Democratic leadership rejected your proposal. What's your pushback? What's your counter? Well, well, I've heard from so many members on both sides, and frankly, from a lot of the chairs, too, who, you know, we, and if you look at our proposal, it actually meets every one of, uh, of the priorities from state and local to unemployment, to help with unemployment, to uh, stimulus checks, to helping our schools and testing. You name it, we really try to find common ground for both sides. And I think when people look at this, it's why there's been such an outpouring of support, frankly, from both sides of the aisle. I think it's a great framework to get negotiators back to the table and move forward. And we're hearing from both sides that there's an interest. In fact, uh, Speaker Pelosi and Senator Schumer just put out a statement saying they're eager to get back to the table. And I, I think we're getting finally getting that thought to get, get people back. Uh, Congressman Reid, uh the White House, at least Mark Meadows, it sounds like, is is open to this proposal. I have not seen, while, while Mitch McConnell, I think, is enjoying being able to note that Demo some Democrats would like to cut a deal, he's not endorsed this deal. Do you think this could get through the Senate um, without House support? You know, I've seen uh, some comments from Mitch McConnell that, that's indicated a willingness to get back into the room and have a conversation based off of some of the things that uh, we have put forward here, as Josh had just indicated. You know, the, the framework, uh, it talks about all the priorities that we can uh, find common ground on. And so I think there is, in talking to senators that we've developed a relationship with, uh, you know, this is always going to be a bipartisan deal where you're going to need a majority of the majority, majority of the minority to support it. And uh, what we did here is show that it can be done. Now it's time for the leadership to get into the room, work out the final details, and do what's right for the American people. And, and frankly, both sides, and stop, cut. I think, Chuck, have to stop throwing mud at each other. And, you know, and it's, it's sort of a right. joke, these comments made at it by Senator McConnell. I mean, just get, let's just get back in the room and get this done because the yeah. American people need it. Well, this is the question I have. Do, do you, what is the, why is it, uh, Congressman Gutheimer, that you think that the speaker believes she can't go below $2 trillion, that somehow you won't be able to go back and pass more legislation later. There seems to be this idea, she thinks this is it, that this is the last train that leaves the station. Well, you know, what we proposed to that point was a, a trillion and a half dollars. Most of what we propose gets us through March, so gets us through the next inauguration, and the next president, whoever it's going to be, can obviously pick up and decide what's best next in the next Congress. But we also put in uh, uh, what we call boosters and reducers, so the it goes from a trillion and a half to two trillion if the virus is still uh, obviously continuing to wreak havoc on the country and vaccine vaccinations are not widespread. And then in, in March, if things are better, um, we all hope they are, then they'll be re the, the package will be reduced. So we found the way that's that actually gets it up to two trillion and down to one three if if things are better. And I, I think we need to find a solution there. It's there. We're, we're very close. But instead of fighting about the numbers, yeah. Chuck, and this is how we came to an agreement, instead yeah. of fighting about the top line numbers, we talked about the programs and said whether it's WIC or SNAP or PPP, more resources for right. PPP. Let's talk about the issues instead of fighting over these top line numbers and shorten the time frame. You know, Congressman Reid, uh, you had said, I, I will give you, I'll give you this, you had said to me, I think about three weeks ago, I think there's some place in the middle. We'll get to the middle. We'll get to the middle. At least you guys are talking, and, you, and you've instituted this. But in a perverse way, has Speaker Pelosi's strategy worked in that it does has gotten the White House up to now $1.5 trillion, and it's gotten the Senate to at least open their mind about it. Could she argue that she's gotten to this point or no? Uh, I, I would argue that, look, at where we're at is we were going to have no relief for the American people. What we've done is thawed uh, this gridlock, and now at least they're talking. Uh, they're hopefully going to get into the room here soon. And who wins in that is the American people. And the gridlock has to end. 
We have to do our job as Congress and what the Problem Solvers Caucus did, and kudos to the team that led it. Dusty Johnson, Anthony Gonzalez, Abigail Spanberger, and Dean Phillips, who were the part mm -hmm. of the strike team that got this done. God bless them. They're true Americans that put America first. You know, Congressman Goddard, I'm curious. It does seem as if the Democratic leadership is, is never wants to have the look of working with Donald Trump. Is that why we're at this stalemate? No, I, mean, I, I think we're at the stalemate because what happens is people just scream and yell and, and don't spend enough time actually getting to know each other and figuring out where they can agree. You know, it's, if you don't ever build those relationships, it's hard, it's hard to use them in an emergency. But, but remember, we did pass several COVID packages in a bipartisan way. They were signed into law. Yeah. And I just think we have to remember, again, that people just get back to the fact that people are hurting. We've got an economic crisis and a health right. crisis, and we've got to get something done. And we can't go home without actually doing stuff to help people and our businesses and our state and local governments. You know, and once you realize that, I think it's easy to get back to the table. And also, everybody can get credit if you actually deliver for people. And that's the other thing we got to not forget. Everybody looks good if we make progress. Right. But very quickly, Congressman Reid, um, the White House, I mean, Democrats have ample reason not to trust the White House. They've been burned before by him. How does the White House make themselves a credible negotiating partner here to the Democrats? Go in the room, negotiate this deal. Get it done, and don't worry about anything else, and that will take care of itself. Sorry. Congressman Gutheimer and, and Congressman Reed, and especially you, Tom Reed, because you've been on here before, I give you both credit. You're eternally optimistic at a time when there is a lot of cynicism in Washington, D.C. There's nothing wrong with a little bit of optimism mixed in with this cynicism. Uh, thank you for sharing your views here, gentlemen. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you, Chuck. Never give up. There you go.